There you go. Bye-bye! Yes? So I have the AMC A-list, and what that is is a membership service. With that, I get up to three free movies a week for nineteen ninety-five a month. It costs more in bigger cities where there are actual uh, people. Uh, and so from 2018, the end of 2018 to, to uh, March of 2020, I saw 177 movie showings in a 66-week period of time, which I think is a pretty darn impressive, if I do say so myself, which I do. Uh, and then the pandemic ruined my big streak and threw me off my groove, but... Now movies are back, and so am I, so get ready for some up-to-date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the Week! Thank you. I, like, I, I always like it when you play the theme music. Makes me feel, <laughs> makes me feel uh, like an important boy. So this week's installment of Steve Stubbs represents my 19th week back in theaters. And in that time, I have seen 33 movie showings in theaters. I'm not really going every, you know, three times a week like I used to back in the day. There's a lot less pressure. So I'm going once to twice a week to the movies, which I'm comfortable with. Uh, so this week... I saw the following two movies in theaters. Uh, Edgar Wright's Last Night in Soho and The Fricking Eternals. Yep. Now first, uh, let's discuss the movie that was not chosen as my movie pick of the week, Eternals. Okay. Uh, did you see it? You started talking about something on the Pope on Film discussion group on Facebook that made me seem like you've seen it? No, I haven't seen it. I just heard of it. But okay. I'm sorry, Eros is a creepy motherfucker. He just yeah. always has been. Yeah, he is. But, uh... I, I liked the movie. It was fun. And I had a good time. Also, at times, the film feels a bit pretentious, and it seems like the movie likes to smell its own farts. Yeah. So, there's that. It's two hours and 37 minutes long. And then you've got, like, 20 minutes of ads and previews before the movie. And then, however long it takes for you to get to the theater and come back, this is basically an afternoon eater. This yeah. is an evening destroyer. You know? Yeah. I realized a couple of hours before the movie that like, shit, the movie starts at 7. I'm getting out of the theater at 10. That's a big, long chunk of time when you add the, the ads in the beginning uh, that basically this is an end game of a movie. Yes. So... And it's full of flashbacks. It's a very flashback-heavy movie, and it, it, I always have some problems with that. It, there isn't that much that ties this movie to the overall MCU. <coughs> I was hoping that this movie would uh, tie into Shang-Chi and tie into all of these different movies. Maybe this this will be a a hint towards what happens in uh, Doctor Strange and all of these different things, but there are some small references to the MCU, like, uh, like we're Eternals and we need to do Eternal things, and so what do you think's happening to the Avengers? <laughs> but if you remove those small MCU references that feel shoehorned in, like yeah. they made the movie, and then it's like, oh, we need there to be MCU references, and they forced, like, a small handful of references in there. But they also reference Superman, so fuck them. Yeah, which is uh, Superman in, like, a fictional setting, so it's weird that they're making a fictional MCU a part of the overall... I mean, you know what I'm saying. I'm a little bit high. 
I, but, I had no interest in this movie, which winds up meaning I, I know more about this movie than movies I do have an interest in. Yeah, that's, that that makes sense. Something comes up and has spoilers. I don't care. I'll fucking play it. I don't. I don't care about this movie. So the only thing I hope it ties into is the Inhumans. <laughs> the freaking Inhumans, man. Yeah, this way we could we could like jettison them both back out of the MCU universe. And just I be mean... like, okay, okay, you know, much like Ang Lee's Hulk, this didn't happen. Uh, speaking of Ang Lee's Hulk, this, like, if you remove the two end credit sequences and the small amount of Marvel references that seem shoehorned in at the last minute, this movie feels like uh, exactly what it is, an Oscar winner's attempt at making a drama. Yeah. This movie considers itself the Ben-Hur of comic book movies, so it comes off as a bit pretentious, but it's fun. I, I had a fun time. I will say I don't think there's a lot of rewatchability in this. Like, I, like, uh, like Shang-Chi. I've seen that three times, and it's coming out as a download uh, this... Yeah, this coming Friday, and I'm really excited to watch it with my kids and, you know, yeah. watch it on the couch and have a fun time with that. Watch it a couple of times. I really like uh, um, Aquafina in it as Sean I've been waiting. best friend. <laughs> Katie. It, it's a really fun movie. It's kind of stupid, kind of fun, and, and, and I really, really like it. And I'll watch it a bunch of times, but Eternals, I've watched it once. I am good. Yeah, you know it's kind of like Black Widow. I felt the same way about Black Widow. That like, okay, I liked Black Widow, but also it should have come out a freaking decade ago. You and Marvel really dropped the ball on that. Yeah. So so that was the Eternals. You have to see it if you're a fan of the MCU. You can watch it once and then say I've watched it, and then you can move on. So so there's that. Uh, and finally. The Steve Stubbs pick of the week is Edgar Wright's new film, Last Night in Soho. Yes, I am very interested. Please uh, tell me. So I've been battling some pretty severe depression lately. Uh, I, I have bipolar disorder, and that's always sort of been an afterthought onto the side, but the older I get, the more it seems to be more of a prominent role in my life. So... I've been battling some severe depression. I seem to now be sort of, you know, on the, right on the peak of that hill. And hopefully, you know, I'm, I think I'm starting to feel better. But a, I specifically went to go see Last Night in Soho because, like, hey, I'm really sad. I'm really depressed. And Edgar Wright has a new movie out. So, uh... I, maybe I should go see that. Maybe that'll make me feel better. Uh, I, it, Scott Pilgrim is an amazing movie. Uh, Baby Driver. Holy shit. So I went into Last Night in Soho pretty much blind. I saw like one preview, and it gave me more questions than answers. So uh, I went in to go see Last Night in Soho, and oh my god, one of my, one of the, one of my favorite movies of the year. Really. It's like in the top five right now. It's not beating Werewolves Within and Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar, but oh man, incredible film. Uh, the visuals are amazing. The plot is really a, a, a real twisting plot, keeps you guessing. The soundtrack is, of course, incredible. It kind of fucks with you because what the soundtrack does is it gets some songs from like the 80s and the 90s and they do covers which make them sound exactly like songs that came out in the 50s and 60s. Yeah. So it took a while for me to like, they'll be in London and they'll be in London in the 60s and hey, everything's swinging 60s London and they'll be playing a song and it's like, wait a second, that's a song from the 80s. Like, what are they doing? It's kind of like what they do with Westworld because yeah. in the TV show Westworld, it's set in the Wild West, but every once in a while, the piano in the saloon will be playing like a 
like a Doors song or something, you know? Yeah. So they do that with the 60s. It's really good. And, uh, well, first off, I, I almost forgot to mention this. Uh, I, most of the time when I go to the movies, there's no one in the movies. I'll, I'll, so many times when I go to the movies, I, I see a film because I live in a real small town in Oklahoma. So a lot of times I go to the movies, there's no one else in the theater. You kind of get used to that in this town if you go to the movies a lot. And as I walked into the theater, I expected it to be empty. But no, there was a young couple doing it in the back row. Really? All right. Yep. And uh, I just kept walking and got my seat and sat down. And uh, if I was of a different age, who knows what my reaction would be. But at this age in my life, my reaction was... As long as you're not moaning during the movie, I'm really excited to see this film. Yeah. You know? Do whatever the hell you want in the back row. That's what the back row is for. Just don't be distracting me. This is Edgar Wright we're talking about here, you know? Yeah. I'm not going to go tell the manager, I'm no rat, Agent Kuyan. And and if if it turned out to be a bad movie... You always got them to watch. Yeah, I got entertainment lined up just in case the movie sucks. So uh, the plot is basically this young woman who may or may not have powers comes. She might have uh, powers, or she might be going insane. She uh, is from a small town in the middle of, I guess, fields or whatever in England, and she gets accepted to this uh, design fashion college in London and she goes to London and she's right there like in the middle of swinging London and she wishes that she could you know live there in the 60s and she can see ghosts see dead people or maybe she's just crazy like her dead mom anyway she starts seeing this woman in the 60s from her point of view and it becomes like a ghost story, and there's a lot of twists as to who done it. It's like a supernatural uh, fantasy time travel ghost thing of a bob. It's really yeah. great, and it took me a long time to realize that like she's renting this room in London from this cranky old woman. It took me so long to finally realize that was Diana Rigg. Yeah. And this was her last appearance right before she freaking died. Yeah. She did amazing in this. Nice and, timing, uh, Edgar. Yeah, right? She's incredible in this movie, and a large portion of the film rides on her. And, uh, goddamn, I wouldn't be surprised if this is nominated for some shit. And you Matt know? Smith, which yeah. I think is... You know, and, and that's part of the fun of watching a watching an Edgar Wright movie. Yeah. You know, to find more British talent that we ignore. Yeah. Yeah. But incredible movie, and I can't wait to see it again. Uh, really rewatchable, especially when you know what happens. You can look and see the like signs. Uh, a really wonderful film. Can't uh, uh, can't uh, recommend it enough. Last night in Soho, Edgar Wright. Be sure and see that before it disappears from theaters. That is my Steve Stubbs pick of the week. Next week, uh, I am watching the horror movie Antlers. I think I saw the preview once, so I'm kind of going blind into that one. And I'm finally watching Dune! Yeah. And I'm really excited to see what my thoughts are, especially since uh, I never read any of these goddamn books. I, I saw the original Dune once or twice. I'm going to have to rewatch that again this week and then go into Dune with that in my mind. And uh, I'm interested to see if I can watch this new Dune and have any idea what the fuck's happening. I, I am really curious because people are fucking raving about it. 
People which, are which shitting is themselves. Fine because people were raving about. First off, okay, any movie you see on a big screen is better than seeing it on a small screen. Just the whole going to a theater, getting popcorn, the whole ritual of it gives you a better outlook about the movie. Yeah. Okay? So it's always fun to go back to people like six months later and find yeah. out what they think of the movie then. Because I remember when Thor came out, people, oh, Thor, oh, 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 this is so good, oh. Then Captain America came out, and nobody was talking about Thor anymore. And if you go back six months after and be like, hey, you saw Thor, didn't you? What did you think about it? It was okay. Yeah. So I'm expecting that, I mean, it's a beautiful movie, seeing it on the big screen. I mean, if, if I got to give it one thing, I got to give it that. And... Like, that's all I hear people reacting to. I heard somebody say it was great and mention the sound design. Okay? What? So it's like, okay, okay. It's kind of funny how you're not talking about the plot, you're not talking about any of the actors or any of the performances. This is a crap movie. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm really excited to see it. I'm really excited to see what I have to say. I, I really want to. I really want to put everything I've said out of out of my out of your mind. I really want to hear your reaction to this movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm also a big fan of Zendaya. I'm not sure if you know this, Bunny, but Zendaya yeah. is Michi, and LeBron James is Gwangi. Is Michi? It, 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 it's a it's a thing it it's a it, it would take a long time to explain so next week finally watching dune really excited about that uh and yeah so join us next week for some more up-to-date movie reviews with steve stubs of the week and cut on that